There's a little split pin holding this cotter pin in on the eccentric. That's it. A little brass piss split pin. That should simply slip out of there now. Should. Right, that's the pin. It's about out. It's nearly given up. Right. So the end of the split pinion goes to the front of the engine or the governor in the engine. Right now will the crank come out with that? There's an oil pipe in there. You need to get that oil pipe out and then hopefully the crankshaft will come out and get my arm down in there and remove that. It's unbelievably untidy in here at the minute. It is a proper shite hole. I've got spanners and bits and pieces and tools. I mean, I'm normally a messy bastard, but this is extremely messy even for me. Right. Get that undone. My skinny little arm going there. Can I get it back out? Oh, I picked the right size spanner up. Oh, John, man. You have. There was a comment in one of the Work on forums, I go on. It looks like it's drawing blood. And I was a mechanic saying to a heart surgeon, he says, I've just stripped that engine and put a full set of valves in it. Got it back again, it's running perfectly. He says, How come I'm on £30,000 a year and you're on £100,000 a year? And the surgeon says, Try doing it with a bastard thing running. <laughs> Which I suppose is a fair comment. Right, that's that out. Now with the moment of truth will this can come out with that separate rod on. I don't think so. So that's probably just slid on the air over the end of the crankshaft probably. See it there, but it's absolutely seized solid. No attempt at it moving at all. Right, so we need to get that off. Somehow. Right, we've actually got it, got some movement on it now. It should just slide off. I would imagine. But he 
the crankshaft is now turning on it. Get it to there. And there's no way it's going to come out with that. That on it's going to be removed. That's the same size as 30 on a mini crankshaft, that. I'm just going to measure it with the interest. Inch and three quarter, big end. Inch and seven eighth main. They are certainly designed to, to do a job of work. Yeah, because it's tightened up again. Right, we need to clean some of the crap off the end of the crank if we can, and then it should just slip off. Right. In there with some memory tape, get that cleaned up, and then we're going to get the crank out. Fucking horrible this. Of every tape should do the job. That's the way our toothbrush is going to work nicely for us. I don't know if you can see it in there. Even the camera's fil bastard filthy now. Trying to give in. Just about off. I don't need to go 
was on one way as well, so I'll be going to mark it. Right. I just want to put a mark on here that corresponds to the front of the engine or the governor end of the engine just so I get it back into the get out of the same way around because it is offset. Just one little pop mark, so it'll take. That's it. That's your bronze. Centric strap sort of a centric bush. It's not even run in when you look at it, it's gorgeous. Well I think it's gorgeous. And it's more or less empty now. There's an oil pick up pipe in there that'll have to be removed and cleaned. That's it there. Straight enough on the oil. But certainly well thought out this. Very well thought out. I think I've got one broken stud in there to remove. And then get it cleaned up. Blasted or whatever. Some water marks on this, but nothing that's going to affect it. That's so much like a mini crankshaft tail. And there's certainly plenty to go at. I wanted a project and I've certainly got one. I've had the crankcase off that Stuart engine in an acid bath, my friend put in his acid bath in his pressure washed it. I'll go to coat there red oxide paint just to stop it rusting because this was down to bare cast iron. Inside it's removed most of the rust but there's still some loose flaky bits so I'll be going to get in there with a die grinder and a wire brush. Engine block preparation is important. I've built a lot of high performance engines using road going blocks as it is a doing a block. And we used to always make sure that every thread hole had a tap put through it to make sure they were all clean all the way down to the bottom and you had no damaged threads. The top of every little hole, every stud hole, gets a, a little counter sink like that just to make sure there's no burrs. We used to actually go inside the blocks and remove all the casting flash and smooth out the inside the blocks so the oil would run off quicker. I don't have any difference but it certainly made you feel better. So block preparation is important. I have found some issues. That one there is stripped. As are those two, they've just rotted away because that was underwater. So there's no thread, so that's thread repairs to put in there. Now the threads on this are quarter BSF. I haven't got a quarter BSF helicoil kit. So I think what I'll do is make the stripped hole 6mm and I can make some studs that go from 6mm to quarter BSF because I've got new studs to make for quite a few of them anyway. There's only me and anybody that watches the video and know that they're metric. So I'm going to try and put some metric thread repairs into there. That's five to do. And I'm going to give the block a good wire brushing inside and spray the whole thing again with red lead primer that will help seal the inside of the block so there is quite a lot of dust coming out of it. I didn't get it sandblasted. I don't think it's a good idea to sandblast stuff like this because the, the sand does impregnate in the cast iron and you have a hell of a job getting it out. 
so that's it. the storage up there now all these have been cleaned up we've got three to repair I do quite a lot of thread repairs on car engines and you can't always get the car engine onto a mill machine or into a vase so often we do them freehand to do them freehand I've got loads of these little guides made this one here has got a hole for the right size drill for the heli coil which is 6.3 mil and it's also got a clearance hole for the heli coil top so it's a simple enough matter to line this up on here put a clamp on then drill and top and that's going to keep your drill and your top nice and straight and in line this hole here is actually already just about worn out to heli coil size so I think we're going to go straight in with the top and see what sort of threads we can get in there it hasn't got to do a great little load on it, it's only a little retaining stud so we'll try the, the top in first if this doesn't work I'll have to go big arrow and make an adapter or sort something out right so basically hold that in place and that's going to keep the this top wrench is shite it really is crap this one's better but not much better Christ, man. Right, that's better. Right through the top. He's putting a thread in there. put a reasonable thread in, I'm sure it'll take a heli coil off, no problem. With a little insert tool. Just a short heli coil. I'll bring the camera in so we can get a better you will just go into there. Right, hopefully you can see that. We'll screw this in until the last thread is just below the surface. Like that. And that screws out. There's a little proggy tool here and that snaps the driving tang off so that now is 6mm I'll put a 6mm bolt into it that's going to be fine, it's nice and tight not wobbling about so that's one done I mean I wasn't going to buy a, a BSF heli coil kit just to do those 5 stud rules that I would never ever use again I have got a quarter whip worth one but that casting is not thick enough for you to put a, a whip worth thread in it will be too short right next these two which will have to be drilled so I'll go and find a clamp that I can use to hold that onto there and then we can drill and sort those two out right so I've used a, a good fitting bolt in that stripped hole actually 6mm to line up my little plate I've got it clamped in place all we do now is put the heli coil drill down through the hole 6.3mm drill it's cast iron so it'll be nice and soft 
And all this do is just keep it nice. Keep it nice and straight. You can feel it in the hole. That's it, simple as that. And we'll move this around. Line it up with the the bigger hole for the, the top. And actually that's it there, the top's going in. No problem at all. I'm putting a slightly longer heli curl into that. I'm going to go down a little bit deep over the top. Get a full length heli curl into there because it, it is quite a thick casting. Little insert tool. Just blow the surface. Slightly, more slightly further in than that. There's such two repairs. I'll do the last three, and then we'll. Have a good clean up here inside the block a little bit more. The other two are actually much worse, worn a lot more. I put an 8mm tap in and that was still loose. So I've got only 8mm heli coil. And I just have to make some stepped studs and lock them into it. It's amazing what the, the corrosion's done. So they're now out of the 8mm heli curl size. You understand why it's important that you do this before you start to put it back together because you don't want to start drilling holes in your engine when you're busy assembling it. Right, they're going to need a little short heli curl so I'll have to shorten these ones down and normally buy two day or one and a half day heli curls and shorten them. Little slit and disc, the best thing to shorten them with. Right, I've shortened those down. Just below the surface. Right, so they're nicely repaired. Little magnet on there catches the, the thing when it's not important. When it's important it never does. Right, so basically that's all the holes repaired on the crankcase now. We'll give it a bit clean up and a coat of red oxide paint and then we can 
start cleaning the bits up and possibly get some of it back together. I really enjoy using this hand drill. Push out with brick clean. So I've got two little bits in there I haven't yet. And as it goes further in the bottom of here, it can be removed once it's been run a few times. You know, they pick all this loose crap up. Nice and warm and sunny out here, so I got a cool little paint on this tonight. parts off as an apprentice and I say to the lad how clean you want this and he says so you can eat your dinner out of it and put me dinner in the bastard <laughs> hey. I've got it clean up like that mate Down side there with a the camera for you, but uh, it is pretty good. It's not bad on side there now. Nice and shiny and bare metal y. We'll give it a coat of red oxide prime on that'll seal it up forever. Get up. Just notice it's got a number 224 stamp on the end of the crankcase. I was only 249 built. I don't, know where, I don't know where one more is, but I don't know where the rest of them are. I've well, got it covered now. And that's the number there. 224. I haven't noticed it uh, stand anywhere else. 
I bought some paint, enamel paint, it's actually called Stuart Turner Green. I'm going to give the engine block or the crankcase a couple of coats before I start to assemble it and then I'll paint all the other bits once it's assembled. Right, this looks rather a splendid green. I'll try not to get it on any of the machine faces, but it's easy enough to clean off if I do. A bit of emery tape. Sharp takes it off. Oh, I like the look of this. Paint goes on very smoothly. Probably give it another coat tomorrow night. You know, you've got to leave 16 hours between coats, so I'm gonna do a lie though. Know. He spills the paint everywhere. Yeah, it's going to take two coats to cover it completely. I'm pleased I'm not doing it in the garage next to the house because it actually. And a lot of fumes coming off it. And it gets nice and warm in this shed so it will dry pretty quickly I would imagine. That's not really too bad. I like it. That's not looking too shabby at all. Pleased with that. And that coat on it tomorrow night. And just to raise that blade, I'll scrape all these faces off and polish up with a bit of emery tape and I'm going to start reassembling it. <laughs> 